Well, as you observed, I should have been using a P100 particulate respirator rather than the N95 mask. And therefore, I have gone and got my respirator, my old respirator, and I bought some new P100 particulate filters to go on it. I checked the inlet and exhaust valves on the mask and the seals and they're all good. So uh, we should be good for air quality now. And I also splurged on some, some new work gloves. I had a new set when we started the job and I've uh, worn out the right hand on, on that new set of leathers. So I'm gonna try this new fancy design with the Velcro strap around the wrist. We'll get back to work now. Oh, and thank you for the heads up on the uh, on the P100 requirement, and I appreciate that. All right. Today's task is to get rid of the asbestos insulated warm air ducting that comes off of the old gravity furnace in the basement. So, got on the full hazmat deal today. And a HEPA vacuum for after we all get done with it. But that's what we're gonna do today. We're well, making some progress getting rid of the uh, asbestos insulated ductwork down here. You see, there's a lot of a lot of it's down. Actually, all of the duct that I'm going to take down right now is down and on the floor. And I just wanted to show you something that's kind of cool I had not seen before. Well, let's see. I'll show you two things. One is that most of the asbestos wrap. With it laying on the floor, if you slice it along the top, it, it will release right at the rust layer. So you can just open up the whole run without creating a lot of dust and debris. Slice it and with a putty knife, just lay it back, peeling it off at the rust layer. What I have not seen before is these ducts are slip jointed together, which is normal, but then, look, they're soldered. I don't know if that was normal back then, but I had not seen it before. It's kind of cool. It makes the duct very rigid and strong. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no, Will Robinson. Danger. The old furnace. Look in the inside at the firebox. First inspection, there's there's no indication that it's got any leaks, cracks, or failures in it. This is good. Pretty excited about that. There's hope we're actually gonna get to keep this. Look at all the lots of treasures in there that that's the cold air return. Well, get that old tub away from the wall and out of the depression that it had kind of brought it itself into on the floor. That required some two by four levers and some blocks and some time and phew, finally made it. It's where it used to be. And look at the quality of the plumbing. Yeah, it might leak. What do you think? Yeah, it might have been leaking. It's all, got all the accumulated crud on the inside of that pipe. The old B-board finish before this tub went in. 
Now on the bottom of the tub, it says this is an American Standard. And looks like it was made in 1951, December 14th, 4 it's gone. I used the sawzall to cut off the 2x4s that were supporting that drywall and now you can clearly see why they chose to put in a drop ceiling. They didn't want to repair this. They should have taken this out and fixed it. Just look at all the rot and mold that's here between the ceiling of the entryway and the floor of the second floor bathroom. I mean, that's just awful. So we'll take that out, not today, but it's going to have to go away. Well, yesterday afternoon, with the help of a new friend, the two of us slid this old cast iron tub out into what will eventually be the laundry. Got it out of the entryway. And this morning I did a little bit of work taking some of the material off of the wall that's going to be on the kitchen side of the entryway. And I just wanted to stop for a minute and just kind of show you what I'm seeing. I had originally thought that this bathroom might have been part of the original design of the house. And I'm thinking that this was added later now that I'm seeing more of the structure. You see this tub surround was just kind of scabbed onto the original two by four framing. There's a two by four and you can see this. This was plastered. That's the original. And then this tub surround has been just, just scabbed onto that lots of little pieces and it's just really a crappy job well all this old plumbing pipe needs to come out so let's kind of cut off a few pieces and get it out of the way while we've got power to the saw <music> days I've been getting the scab off of the, the wall in the entryway here. Haven't done anything more with the flooring since 
last. I don't want to go any lower right now, it just make it harder to clean up. Our goal is to find out why and repair this depressed corner. And I think we're finding that it's like we, like I had expected, it's rot and decay. Here I pulled off the side of this door jam down here. You can see that's not, that's not sound. And the fasteners that were in there, see they've had so much rust and decay, they're almost gone. And in getting the, getting the scab off of this wall, it's interesting to see the uh, modifications that have been done to this load-bearing wall. Not, not, not good. So, in addition to the rot, we've got this uh, unapproved engineering modification that we'll have to correct. And these, these studs are, are not in good condition. They're, they're soft and punky, plus been cut away. So I'm gonna go and get some new studs, new two by fours, and we're going to fix this wall before we go any further because this is holding up the second floor on the south end of the house. I think second floor is just staying up there kind of out of force of habit. So, next thing is we're going to fix this. The ceilings look so high in here now. Oh. This is looking great. Look, Jim has removed the top. I think we'll remove this whole area. This little piece of wall too that has the duct in it still. So this will be open. Big tall ceilings. It's looking so pretty. So you were telling me about the we discovered these. Not 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 good. This originally did not have plumbing in it and there was plaster wall on here. Yeah. And then somebody took away part of the plaster and they put in a bunch of plumbing pipes they cut these studs to run pipe in them apparently not appreciating that this is a low bearing wall and so there is for example this nice pipe stud that I can wiggle back and forth with my fingers <laughs> it's there's, not a, supporting it. there's a floor joist here where my right foot is where these tape lines are these are the these are the floor joists, mm. and this this sill plate ends on a floor joist. That's that's kind of okay. And this one ends on that, and this one is suspended in the air. Okay. So then we you discovered some mildew here. Rotten mildew at the end of these two by fours, so they have collapsed downward. We know for sure here. I I showed you that in video yep. and I'm sure that the same is true of the next one over and the ones in the corner here which was the start and of this whole that's, thing right that's what's supporting the second floor so this has collapsed a little bit due to rot and needs to be pressed up and then the second floor is suspended in the air it needs to be repositioned and pushed up so we work from the bottom up, get the bottom <laughs> in the basement, get those okay. issues resolved. Then we'll have a support that we can brace on this and we'll jack, I'll come over here over the main beam. We can support this, we can push this up, put in new studs parallel to the ones that are there. We might as well just leave them there. We'll supplement that, that'll make this first floor solid to the second, then we can go up on the second floor and know that we can put a jack 
on the second floor and be able to push it up in order to put in braces where we need in the stud walls up there, which will then make the force from the basement to the third floor continuous. <laughs> <laughs> And our house will once again be solid and it will be more or less flat. Thank you, Mr. Jim. I hope that this happens in a timely fashion. Me too. This is what was held up with the support that's outside that's completely rusted and not doing any supporting. So this is underneath that bathroom that you took the yeah, the, uh, this is the damaged wall, right? Yeah, this is, this is right along, this is along the wall. That's, that's the plumbing wall on the first floor down, right? Yeah. And now you're holding it up with these. Adjustable support columns. <laughs> this was holding up the whole house now? No, it's holding up part of it. That wall is no good. It's not aligned with the, the main beam in the center of the house. This is this is underneath, you know, out in, in the new kitchen area, about right. three feet where this is. You know, the first floor there's nothing lined up with this. So whatever's holding up the second floor here is, here is not. So do we need to put another uh, support beam in? Uh, well, this this is going to work, but it, we need to. It, yeah, we're going to put in some more support. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short. Yeah. Gotcha.